and welcome to another drive-in double feature i'm ryan i'm nathan and this is a podcast where we talk about two movies a week every tuesday and thursday but before we get into anything we have a patreon over at patreon.com slash drive-in double feature podcast something a little extra for you guys out there that gives us a support of five dollars a week you get a couple of fun bonus episodes we're playing a couple of games going through some popular lists just something extra for you supporters out there if you choose not to support us don't worry it does not affect any regular content at all but we still appreciate you nonetheless but anyway today we're going to be talking about 1976's matilda directed by danny devito which is about a little girl with kinetic powers which she can make things float make things you know rio perlman's and his wife what's Uh, the name of the little girl uh i i don't know like patricia or something yeah well i hate her worst character in any movie ever yeah let's not talk about that movie let's actually talk about uh, this other movie called Matilda, which is about a boxing kangaroo starring yeah, the more popular Ellie. one. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it. I mean, rolled dull, more like rolled piece of crap. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I say every time I see one of his, when, when I read one of his books, <laughs> I pick up the other Matilda book and I say, please. Yes. How is this movie based off a book? You sent me this text before <laughs> the show. I didn't even know. And then it's like I, the book cover. <laughs> it's based off a book uh, uh, written by Paul Galesco. Okay. Uh, Gale- Galeco. And he also wrote several books that were turned into movies. In fact, another one that he wrote was The Poseidon Adventure. Oh, wow. <laughs> that, that man spanned a lot of genres. I actually applaud him. That's interesting. Yeah. And uh, this movie was, like I said, directed by Daniel Mann, who also directed some pretty famous movies, some like a Palme d'Or uh, nominated movie. Really? Yeah. Uh, I'll Cry Tomorrow. He also directed back uh, Come Back, Little Sheba. Yeah. But he, he he's a returning director for us. He directed Willard. Wait, did he? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Silly me. <laughs> so, you know what? He just had a thing for animals, I guess. I don't know. That's two animal movies made by him on here. Well, well I mean, do you think uh, Ben and the Brads could take on this this kangaroo? Or do you think this kangaroo would have their nose <laughs> They're a little short, <laughs> I'll be honest. So I think... I think I think Ben would win because he can nibble at the kangaroo's little feet and or big feet, I should say. Well, I mean, as we come to find out, spoilers. Apparently, you only need to punch a stupid kangaroo once and it's done. So. <laughs> oh my god, we'll get into that plot point. Cause... Oh my god! All right, so there's for getting all on the table. There's a lot to unpack. With there this is. One. I, um, so well, I. I you were you Go were going to get into the cast list, uh, and I and I interrupted you, but yes, uh, Elliot Gould's in this, and so is Robert Mitchum. Uh, yeah, really accomplished actor, and he's in Matilda. There's a few other people in this uh, that I know that are like very accomplished actors, and I don't know how they ended up in this movie. I don't know. I mean, I guess. You know, you think, oh well, it's a book. I mean, it's it's got to be pretty good, right? So, yeah, that's why, what I think with every book. I mean, why why would they just make any old? You wouldn't they just make any old movie off of any old book? Every every movie that gets turned into a book is based off of a great book. Always, always, yeah. We have our Battlefield Earths and movies like that. Fifty Shades of Grey. You can't tell me there's. Or, yeah. Yeah. Well, when I read it for the first time, it sucked. And then after I saw the movie and read it, I was like, oh, there's genius here. So at first I said this movie sucked. And then I saw it was based off of a book. And I'm like, oh, silly me. This is a masterpiece. Yeah. Um, there is uh, one returning actor who has shown up in now three, at least three of the movies that you and I have talked about. Really? Who is this? It's. Uh, Harry Holcomb from okay. Foxy Brown and Godzilla versus King Kong. He was the judge who they made fun of his 
its size. So that's right. Okay, awesome. And you know what? I'm happy with that. Harry Holcomb is a new show favorite. In fact, this is his last movie because he died right afterwards. Oh, well, that's sad. Okay, now we're getting like his whole career. Interesting. I feel like we need to just do his whole <laughs> filmography at this it's point. It's probably full of stuff. Um, uh, God. But yeah, this is a uh, but yeah, this is a uh, Elliot Gould vehicle, I guess. I and, guess. And he is a uh, promoter for a bunch of these big events. And there's a British uh, boxing coach that owns Matilda, which they do not explain any backstory for this kangaroo yeah. whatsoever. They, they He's don't just explain. a boxing kangaroo. <laughs> they don't explain why this kangaroo is called Matilda. They don't ever explain why this kangaroo loves to fight. They don't. I mean, they're just like, well, it's a kangaroo. It loves to punch people. And yeah, the kangaroos just fight. Yeah. <laughs> but but well, it, oh, go ahead. But no, his owner, you know, just somehow ends up with this boxing kangaroo and loves him to death. Talks about him like he's the greatest fighter ever. Like he's got more heart than any other fighter out there. This kangaroo. <laughs> Well, just to show you how innovative this movie is, this movie breaks the fourth wall right away. <laughs> and yeah, I love it. The, the boxing coach is talking directly to the audience. And what I, so the, he's explaining about Matilda. He's like, ah, I used to box all the greats, but none of them were as good as Matilda. And, and he's like, in fact, Matilda bought me this bar. And I'm like, and part of me is like, well, that's kind of messed up. He stole all the funds from a kangaroo. That's what it <laughs> sounds like. He got winnings and everything. Has he goes on tour and it's like, no, nope, this is my money because he's an animal. But he's okay to fight humans, you know that that's okay. But animals don't get money, <laughs> right? And they start the very open. Like I said, they don't explain anything about the backstory. Is just he and Matilda just show up in New York one day and. Matilda immediately goes on a rampage and starts like KOing like the hot dog cart guy. I love and, that scene because and he <laughs> he said he's like she's just playing. What do you like? Don't don't yeah. need to get freaked out. Knocking the crap out of him. I love it because this movie's narrated by this guy and he's like, oh, in New York, it's so hard to find a bite to eat. And you go to the hot dog cart and then Matilda just starts beating the crap. Oh. It, crap out of the dude and uh, we should say that this is not a real kangaroo for one there is no real kangaroos oh. in this it is a it is a suit actor and it is scary oh, horrible <laughs> like one of the worst looking yeah. suits i've seen because it doesn't I, it doesn't blink ever mm -hmm. or anything it just has these soulless eyes that just stares right into your soul mm -hmm. the whole time and it does not look good, but it, it's just a guy in a suit. And I keep saying Matilda. I've, I've, I probably have returned to Matilda as a she already, I, I think. But Matilda oh, yeah. is a boy. It is a boy. It is, it, they don't, that's the other thing, too. They don't explain how Matilda got his name mm -hmm. at all. So it, just, uh, it leads to funny situations where everyone thinks it's a girl. I know. Well, yeah. there's other, there's this other scene, too, I want to talk about later. But, uh, yeah. They so you know Elliot Gould's a, a promoter that's down on his luck. He's being employed by his brother-in-law, mm -hmm. and he's not he's uh, hasn't landed like that big act yet. And then but uh, the boxing coach he just he just knows to show up there and yeah somehow uh, and it works <laughs> out. He's like yeah I'm here, um, and it's Elliot Gould in this. And you're a big Elliot Gould fan, right? Like you like, you've watched most of his stuff. Ah, well, I can't say that, but I yeah. do enjoy at the ones, the ones where he really knocks out of the park. I love, I mean, like the long goodbye is great. Mash yeah. is really good. Bob, Ted, Carol and Alice. I like a lot as well. Yeah. Um, but, um, but you, you had never heard of this one. I, this one's kind of a buried movie or like, when did you learn about this? Was, was it whenever we were looking at letterbox together? Cause that's when I was really just learned about this movie. It, either you told me about it on letterbox or it was just one of those where I was like, Oh, this is a weird movie on Tubi or something. And yeah, I, this movie I think is it is, is hidden. And I think more people need to know about it just because it is just, 
bizarre. It, it, I, I, I don't know. There's so many forgettable it's movies. Not. I don't think this movie's forgettable. I'll say that it, for it. It's not, but I'll say this. This movie is awful. <laughs> it's <laughs> so, so bad. So, eh. I, I, you know what, Ryan? I enjoyed it. Okay, so it's... it's Whoa! A, I did. It's a bad movie. It's a bad movie, but I came out of it and I was like, you know what? I had fun with it. It's awful. <laughs> But it wasn't boring, and I think that has something to say for it. There, there's so many wonderful moments in here, and yes. yeah, it, there there are. It is um, Elliot Gould is just being Elliot Gould, and this is kind of you would say this is going for a children's movie angle, right? Like that's what it is. You would think, yes. by the premise, but it but it's really not. It's not. It's not. It <laughs> it doesn't do any because Elliot Gould has a whole subplot line there's an animal activist woman who's really against the kangaroo boxing which you know what i understand but elliot gould is trying to sleep with her to try to change her mind and make they so the kangaroo can box in like what california right oh and and elliot gould yeah is because her brother is the boxing commissioner for california yeah and elliot gould is such a creep in this (laughs) movie to this and to this woman this woman wants nothing to do with them now all right, imagine this. You're in a, she's in her hotel room. Mm-hmm. She's getting room service. So she's like in a robe or whatever. And mm-hmm. as room service is bringing the food in, Elliot Gould kind of slips into the room and hides behind the door. Mm-hmm. And wouldn't you be just horrified if you <laughs> shut the door and there's just the guy that you hate just like standing there and be like, what are you doing? And then he just starts forcing himself onto her and starts yes. kissing her. Ugh. And he says... It tastes great, but it's not that friendly. <laughs> yeah. You know, this dude's scary. And he's trying to, like, get with this woman. And, like, there's this whole joke where she takes his shoes. I, I don't know. But it's like, oh, I sent you the bill for my shoe. <laughs> well, there's a whole running gag because he shows up. He pretends to be, like, a dog lover and mm-hmm. has all these dogs. And then he's like, oh, one of the dogs bit me. And then she takes his shoe off to look to see. And then Mm-hmm. she chucks the shoe and then he's like oh i charged you for my shoes and she's like yeah i got the bill he's like well if you ruin one you gotta pay for both and then he then that he gets mad at her in the hotel room he throws another shoe at yeah, her throws it at her very violent and, man <laughs> and then he just and then he walks out in the hall and he's like uh-oh i got rid of my shoe and <laughs> just there's like a whole like shoe plot well because at first, he says uh, to her, he's like, man, you've got really long legs for a woman of your size. And and then after she looks at his legs from the bite, she's like, well, your legs are ugly. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it, it's This is in a movie that I, I watched ads for this movie. And it's like, take your family to see Matilda. And I just like, these scenes, no. There's also a mob plot line in this. It's real that I think for young children well, is not for them. What an unforgettable name for the mob boss to Uncle No No. <laughs> and because, uh, well, so the whole plot is that Matilda, he's, they're really trying to get Matilda as like a boxing act. And they're, the main goal is they really want Matilda to be the world champion. Yes. And, yeah. and Matilda goes on like a, knocks out a bunch of people and he matilda is in the like they're doing a big carnival act and then the world champ is like well i'll box that kangaroo and gets in there Mm -hmm. matilda knocks him out in one hit but it turns out the world champ was owned by the mob boss (laughs) (laughs) yeah and uh they're like oh boss we didn't know we didn't know the the, the world champ is going to be there boss and (laughs) and uh Uncle No No is like, this doesn't make No No very happy. <laughs> I love it. And they're like the bumbling idiot mob bosses. So, because the whole plot line ends up being like, um, they try to kill this kangaroo and they're trying to figure out how to kill and or like at least take out this kangaroo. What a there's a wild scene oh. where the mob boss is in front of like a board. It's like that's okay, my that's, favorite scene in the movie. I love this scene <laughs> <laughs> where it has a picture of the kangaroo. A picture of a man and it has dots on the legs and it's like okay you see 
how many dots are there? And they're like, two. And then they, the kangaroo has multiple dots for the tail. But five minutes go by of these guys not understanding it's what It's like they're five minutes. He's, yeah. he's like, you see what's wrong with this picture? It's like, I don't know, boss. What's wrong with the picture? And then just, it's like, well, what does the kangaroo have? The kangaroo's got more dots. So what do you do? You get rid of one of the dots. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then we're going to chop. Their brilliant plan is that to chop off the kangaroo's tail. Yeah, but the kangaroo beats him at every turn. So, because, you know, Matilda's actually really smart, even though he doesn't blink, um, doesn't really move his ears, his mouth, uh, nothing. He's kind of a dead, dead, but he sure can punch. He can punch and jump a little. <laughs> um, I, I, so, I, I guess I could ask. So, Did you notice that they made this kangaroo anatomically correct? No, I did not. (laughs) There are are testicles on this kangaroo outfit. I didn't, I don't remember this. (laughs) It is, it is, go back and watch it. Good Lord. This is like, uh, all right. I gotta, hold on, pause it for a second. Okay. I gotta, I gotta. (laughs) I it's, it, it's like Pom Poco, the 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 it's pretty much, yeah. It just has like yeah. two little balls and like a little I guess a sh- like a shaft or something. <laughs> <laughs> I I can't find it, but you'll yeah. have to go back and watch it. But, but the kangaroo is in I will go back and watch this movie just to, just to, at least maybe skip through it a little. But oh I was just God. like, why? Why why was that necessary? And Elliot yeah. Gould had to act next to this thing. I couldn't even imagine. Or does Robert Mitchum ever appear in a scene with the kangaroo? I well, he's there in the crowd when yes, that's at, true. during the during the fight, but I don't think he's like hugging on this thing or whatever. He never shakes hands with it or anything. He never shakes the paw, no. No. Uh they uh Oh, one other scene too I want to talk about. So when they're trying to get uh, Matilda booked, they uh, they're like they go to this cowboy, and then Elliot Cool puts on this really bad Western accent. Yes, and, what a great uh, scene! <laughs> I, like clearly, like a New York guy doing a, like a Texas accent of some yes. sort. Not even kind of sounding like he's from out west, but. No. The thing I wanted to mention from this scene, so he kind of goes, explains, he's like, well, you know, Matilda, Matilda is one of the greatest fighters out there. He's really tough and blah, blah, blah. And uh, the guy at the end, like, <laughs> I don't know if you picked up on this line, but the guy at the end, he's like, well, with a name like Matilda, he ought to be very tough unless he's strange. You know what I mean by strange. Yes, right? like, I noticed that. I guess, yeah. like, like he would be horrified that this boxer was gay. Yeah, yeah. Very, <laughs> very old timey of this movie. Like, oh, don't tell me. I would rather have a kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> this guy would rather see a boxing kangaroo than, than, than an gay. openly gay man and in, in his boxing ring. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know what's weird? Because the kangaroo's owner is in this scene too, just sitting there. This guy seems like a good guy, right? Like, no nonsense, kind of just wants to make it in the world. But he's very complicit in all of, like, this crap Elliot Gould does. Elliot Gould lies his way to the top, uh, just, like, I don't know, is mean to people, screws people over. And this guy, the kangaroo guy's owner, is just like, yeah, okay, as long as I'm, as long as I'm making it, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Right. I he he has no qualm. That's the other, okay. So we mentioned this earlier that Matilda's Matilda has like a he's got a great fighting persona. You know he could he could box like any other great fighter. Mm-hmm. Knocks out a bunch of guys leading up to the final match. But once we're getting closer to the final match, they choose to reveal this now of all times that yes. the trainer's like oh. We can't let Matilda fight because if Matilda gets boxed, because kangaroos are different. If a kangaroo gets hit by another kangaroo, it'll never box again. Yes. And oh, so and, annoying. Well, I was just like, 
why why are we just learning this now because what i thought was if they were going to do it that way what i would have done is they would have he would have mentioned it before matilda got into all those fights and then mm-hmm. he could have told elliot gould elliot gould would be like oh well it's fine and worked worked his way up and then mm-hmm. and then at the end he would have had a conscience type of thing but yeah but immediately he tells uh, elliot gould about it they go along with the fight during the fight which okay the the final fight too is also very bizarre too because yes. matilda is beating the crap out of the world champ like not mm-hmm. even a close fight no and at first, like the crowd loves Matilda, and then as it goes on, the crowd starts turning on Matilda, <laughs> like booing this kangaroo. Yeah, and I'm like, and I'm like, huh? And I I didn't understand that part. I didn't and, either. And they they eventually explain it, and <laughs> they say uh, they're like, oh well, they saw themselves in that fight. Man always has to conquer against an animal and i'm like what <laughs> why would they cheer in the beginning then also that's quite awful <laughs> I, I, if i went and yeah. saw that i'd be like you know, like yes <laughs> well, the kangaroo wins. Well, you know i would get really upset if that dude punched a kangaroo honestly <laughs> i would hope that the kangaroo dodges every hit well yeah so that happens in the movie is yeah. just the guy Matilda has never been hit. And then the one time mm-hmm. Matilda, it, it, it is really sad because <laughs> he punches Matilda like right in the stomach. And Matilda, he just goes like, ah. Yeah. <laughs> like the first time he makes a noise in the movie. No, he makes lots of noise. He goes like, does he? Ah, oh, that's ah, right. He does like the like, little, like, like the slide whistle almost noise. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> so they, 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 they and then uh, Elliot Gould throws in the towel, and that's it. And that, and they said Matilda's retired. Yep. So uh, the other thing too is, is that Uncle Nono, leading up to this fight, mm-hmm. is trying to bribe Elliot Gould's character, saying, "I don't, you know, whatever you got to do to make this not happen, you know, let her take a dive, or like let, let's switch fighters. I'll give you all this money. Work. We'll switch fighters." And mm-hmm. He's like, no, not gonna let you go. Know, you think Elliot Gould's gonna be a scumbag in the movie, well, at least with well, he kind of is to the woman, but in terms of the promoter, yeah, he's he he does stand his ground. He's like, no, I'm gonna do the right thing. And yeah. and then at the end, Uncle Nono calls his bookmaker and he's like, Give me two million on the kangaroo. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? So then I thought maybe. He was going to have the world champ do like I I didn't understand that fall part for him or something right yeah no just maybe he believed in the kangaroo he he fell in love with Matilda himself and I'll, I am so sorry but this is one of the dumbest endings I've seen to a movie ever because yeah. like I said Uncle No No is the biggest you know he's the antagonist of the movie he hasn't shown any feelings of being like mm-hmm. a good person or anything like that leading up to this like he has threatened to kill his <laughs> subordinates and everything mm-hmm. and trying to kill this kangaroo and then at the end of the movie you know matilda takes the punch they the fight's over and then they cut back to present day and the boxing coach says and then uncle no no bought matilda and matilda lives on his farm now i'm like what yeah, his farm his kangaroo <laughs> why did he let him do that right it made him seem like they were like best buddies like oh yeah that's my buddy matilda and he's like oh yeah you know he, he, we sold him he bought yeah, me this bar <laughs> well can you imagine like the the guy that was trying to kill your fighter just like i'll i'll pay for it all right yeah sounds good. good bye you know not even thinking matilda's probably attached to you uh, or something I mean the guy the the guy got what he wanted. He got his freaking pub. That's all he wanted, apparently. Yep, yep. And he named it after the kangaroo. Uh, yeah. So kangaroo's not even allowed to drink. I know. Probably won't even read. I don't know how long kangaroos live for. Hopefully, they make it. To, well, no, they are in America. So yeah, twenty one. Damn. Well, they so. And then there's a little baby kangaroo at the end, which is actually a real kangaroo this time. Thank yes. God. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine like a fake like 
baby can you kangaroo. Imagine? I was, can you imagine if they got like a little person like in a kangaroo outfit? Yeah, it, it, it's like, just like punching a bag, punching bag. You know what? I would watch it. Uh, I, maybe Matilda too. Maybe years later. Oh, well, that's that's what the Danny DeVito directed. But oh, it just changed. It changed. They changed the kangaroo into to a just a human child. Gotcha. It's a little telekinetic girl. Um, Easy trade. No, but so that it, like I said, but it, years and years have gone by because, of course, Elliot Gould has married this animal rights activist girl. Mm-hmm. And, of course, of course. But apparently, years have gone by. Now they have like these teenage kids too. See, that, that's what I thought was <laughs> weird. They didn't put on any aging makeup or anything. They look just like the same as they did. They get out of the car, and it's like actual like kid it's not like a baby most of these movies end it's like oh yeah we have a baby now no these are like children children like <laughs> yeah like 10 11 like something like they're not young young kids so apparently you know this is i guess like in the 80s or 90s and yeah. set in the timeline but it looks like one day has passed by and they yes. have a full family now yeah it's it's so it's such an unnecessary ending you know when i this movie ended I wasn't thinking, oh, I wonder what happened to Elliot Gould. Uh, I think that's really important. Let's get back to that. I did not care about his romance with the animal rights activists. It's actually really awful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Um, um, so there's one other really big thing in this movie that we haven't talked about yet, that, which mm-hmm. is another reoccurring thing we've talked about in another movie. Okay. Very, very over product placement from mcdonald's oh yeah yeah <laughs> like back in me i was just thinking that they love mcdonald's and you know you know something else reminds me of mcdonald's I, we didn't talk about this there's a specific car they drive around with a window in the top that the kangaroo can pop his head through and look oh through. yeah the little dome at the top yeah it looks like something like a mcdonald's mobile i don't know that i would see in a commercial it, it it's so weird but yes they have big macs right they eat a big mac yeah. at one point well, no, there's the scene. So they the the boxing coach, he's the narrator throughout this. So yeah. after they go on the road and do a fight, uh, they all they, the boxing coach says, and then we we made sure to eat good every night. And it shows them <laughs> eating at the McDonald's, and and it, it's like, oh, let me here's i mean don't forget your sunday sir oh thanks and yep and they're in like their uniform they're, they're they're in like a mcdonald's parking lot like happily eating mcdonald's yes. and then and then there's another scene there's a second scene where like you said it does like that. does an extreme close-up on a mcdonald's like big mac and just <laughs> like like it's a freaking commercial it is i mean that's what it it, it, it product placement was such a different beast back in those days and mm. you know what morgan Sp- morgan spurlock shut your mouth matilda ate mcdonald's every night and is a boxing champion okay <laughs> so Matil- matilda definitely would have supersized oh yeah matilda was definitely a supersizer <laughs> Yeah. but um, i just i was like when i saw that i was like oh my god like i just yeah. was i was not expecting that because no everyone everyone always makes a big deal about mac and me with the with the mcdonald's so i already knew about that but going into this i was just like oh what I was like why isn't this one this one definitely like this huge is, mcdonald's yeah it is and i guess that like, that's i personally recommend this movie i do i do i mean not only i kind of liked it because you know it's a bad movie but it's a lot of fun and i think it's i think it's a bad movie worth seeing i i really do it's like one of those like oh wow you kind of like mac and me in a way it's like you, you got to see it to believe it in a way i i have to mention one other plot point oh uh, what's that so they they do get shut out from the boxing commission mm-hmm. but they do have one loophole to do that and instead of them bribe you know like actually having like a fight venue is that they record a live made for tv movie that's right with one of yeah. with one of the plot points being a boxing match with, with matilda <laughs> and so it's technically the, a fight did happen but it was in a movie so it technically doesn't count as like an actual yeah boxing match with a venue 
Yes, yeah, I love this. I would love to watch the sitcom because it has like an old couple like bickering too at the beginning of it, and then they're Matilda's just standing in the background. <laughs> you know, I was I was with his little balls out. Yeah, with his little balls. They showed that on TV. Um, but now I was reading like some production stuff. I guess they had originally planned to use a mix of a man in the suit and a real kangaroo. But um, it was just too jarring, the cut between them. So they somehow decided, oh, man in the suit's the way to do it. <laughs> I, I couldn't imagine getting a kangaroo to cooperate like that at all. Like no. in the slightest. No. And it, I mean, I will say, I mean, it does look like the kangaroo has a good boxing form. <laughs> um, yeah. It, but it is. It is played by a stuntman in there that's doing that. Who's done a lot of different stunt work for movies. Um, yes, yeah. Uh, but what a what a movie! I mean, I can't. A movie. It, it's it's not good. I'm gonna. That's my case. It's not very good, but was not boring in the slightest either. No, it's it's one of those bad movies that's just like actually fun so it doesn't rank down there as like the worst for me because there are some really awful movies that are no fun at all this is like just bizarre i can't believe more people don't know about this one. Oh, i would watch this movie over uh, watch this movie again before i'd watch mac and me again because mac and me was just like torturous to sit through yes yeah and this is actually kind of i don't know it's an interesting thing i guess yeah definitely and mm. you know i will you know elliot gould he does he's charismatic he's got his like his little charm about him and yeah you know, but... we didn't even get into the subplot with robert mitchum because robert mitchum's trying to get the mob boss and all that and robert mitchum you know i always like seeing him in movies <laughs> he, he's getting a paycheck you know apparently him and uh, elliot gould would smoke a joint on set every day you know what that's awesome i love it <laughs> I would love to see that team up more often. Yeah, I think so. I mean, yeah. darn, it can't, can't happen again. No, it can't happen again, but if I could, I would. That definitely, mm-hmm. I w- I'd pay to see that. Do you think Robert Mitchum smoked a joint before, like, every movie he was in? Yeah, you know, he probably did it before, uh, God, what's that movie called again? Night John of the Blanken. Hunter. Night of the Hunter, yeah. Cape Fear. Fucking stoned out of his mind. When he's about to strangle these kids. Okay, Cape Fear. I could see it. I, I I really can't. I think about Robert De Niro and Cape Fear. He's like just like absolutely insane in that role. So. <laughs> just terrorizing Gregory Peck. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, what a movie. I, it's it's something I. Just for the oddity of it, just just watch it. I mean, yeah. it's yeah. I like I said, you're not. It's not good, but if you're looking for another so bad it's good movie, and you've seen all the popular ones already, pop this one in. Then this will definitely be a fun fun ride. Yes, it will. All right. Well, Nathan, what are we going to be talking about next time? Well, next time it's going to be a brand new year. We're going to be in the year twenty. 20- 23 and i think the perfect way to start a year off with drive and double feature is we return back to a little bit of bonzilla so yes but there is a catch we are not going next in the eon films we're going to be going off into a little side venture we're going to be talking about casino royale from the 1960s Sorry, Ryan. I knew I knew it was about to come out. You're gonna say you're gonna say I love um I Eddie love Craig, Judy Dench. Judy Dench. Yeah. <laughs> Who might be in this? I don't know. She could be in the background because this movie's supposed to have t- t- yeah, cameos. You know, she could she could finally be the Bond girl for once. I would hope you know what? She deserves it, in my opinion. Um, yeah. but yes, that and that is not streaming anywhere. You will have to rent that if you do want to check that out yeah uh well perfect well thank you so much for joining us if you'd like to offer any thoughts opinions of us send us an email over to drive and double feature podcast at gmail.com don't forget to follow us on twitter at didf on once again check out the patreon at patreon.com slash drive in double feature podcast but 
Until next time. Until next time. Don't call it a comeback. I've been here for years. A 